Today on Drawbly, Ben is painting a la prima. Hey, I'm Ben. And I'm Abby. And we are drawing together because art is better with friends. So click that subscribe button if you're new around here. And check out our brand new brushes linked below. Ooh. So I'm painting a la prima using only a singular brush. So a la prima is kind of like a... It's what you gravitate towards. You a love it. So a la prima isn't technically what I'm doing, I guess you could say, but... I will say that what I'm doing is painting without a sketch, and I'm not using any special tools. Well, then I'm so calling I'm not, it all I'm not using layers. I'm all on one layer, all with one brush. This is the Abracadabra brush from our brush set. And um, I'm trying not to use any like uh, adjustments or anything like that, but I do a little bit here and there, especially towards the end. I'll do some like, you know, opacity things. I think here that's and appropriate. There. I absolutely do. But for the most part, you know, I just kind of paint and just work with one brush and uh, try to really push myself in that area. Yeah. I do one set of color adjustments here at the beginning though. I, I accept it. I condone thank you, it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so with that all out of the way, yes, I am painting this portrait and I'm very proud of the way that this one turned out. I worked on it for quite a while. Oh, yeah, you did. I remember because um, I've been here this week and I've seen like little installments of it and it has been a, a long work that you've put into this one. Yeah, I wanted to, it's been a while since I've done this for one, because I've been working on sketches mm -hmm. and lines and drawing for a long time. But two, I really wanted to just see how far I could push a painting. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, because I, I went in with the mindset of like, I feel like if I put a lot of time into something, I can produce a painting of pretty high quality. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see exactly how far I could get with that. Yeah. And I kind of, I don't want to say I impressed myself, but I was definitely kind of pushing it further than I maybe initially thought I could. Well, you definitely impressed me. Oh. I thought it looked really cool. And also, you know, this is something we talk about sometimes rarely, like our ability to pick a good reference that's fun to work on and has a lot yeah. to go with. Like, yeah. this is a great, very cool reference. So. Yeah, it's a really simple portrait and uh, it had a hand on it, which I came to the conclusion later that I spent, you know, just an absolute ton amount of time on this hand compared to the face. I always do. <laughs> I always do. Hands are so deceptively hard. They are. But uh, the the colors on this, like the colors in the mm. face, the bounced yellows and reds and purples and greens were so hard for me to nail down. But um, just by working with it for a really long time, I kind of slowly got there. And by zooming out every once in a while. Yeah, the zoom outs are so important. I like that. It's like kind of being able to thumbnail as you go with the actual picture, which yeah. is super cool. Yeah. So I spent an entire week on this painting and one more, which I'll show at the very end, which was a quick landscape, which I actually did before this, but I spent a lot more time on this. So I wanted to spend most of the time here. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see the landscape too then. Yeah. So I've been doing a la prima painting this week. What have you been working on this week? So. This week, I have been working on a master study of a very cool artist, Esben Lash. Ooh. And I have been meticulously studying a couple of works of his, and those will be in my next video. Well, I'm excited to see it. I learned, I felt like I learned a lot, you know, at least it, it was really satisfying to work on something that just was going to look good because I'm copying his work, which looks really good. Yeah. I, uh, I think after this, I'm probably gonna go back to lines briefly to work on some like gestural stuff because I've mentioned to you, gesture drawing has always been really hard for me. I really gravitate and work well with this kind of stuff, I think, because it's a lot more similar to sculpting. Mm -hmm. And it's something where I can literally just sit there and kind of noodle on it for a really long time, but actually make progress. <laughs> so I feel really a, a lot more in my element, let's say, when I'm okay. working on stuff like this. Yeah, definitely. I like it. But and yeah, um, because I was using one brush this whole time, I had to come up with like interesting uh, solutions, let's say, for doing things like little textures, like these um, splotches that they have on their face. Oh yeah, because if you're just using one brush, you can't use like a spatter brush or something. Yeah, definitely made me have to have, oh, oh, and also the big, oh, I totally forgot to mention this. I didn't use any blending brushes as well. A big part of this that I wanted to focus on was mm -hmm. manually blending. Uh, so like sampling colors with my actual paintbrush 
and like trying to create gradients with it. I love that. And that was probably the hardest part of this. Like a hundred percent, I wouldn't normally do that. I think the whole purpose of the blending tool is to be there and be useful. And um, I'm definitely more used to using the blending tool, but I feel a lot more confident manually blending mm -hmm. my paint together now. That's awesome. And yeah, I agree. I think, you know, it's a, a great tool to use and to have, but going without almost like reinforces how awesome and useful of a tool it is. So just as good a lesson there as using it really. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I don't know, just watching this come together, I think early on when you're working this way, when it's like, when it's a drawing, you can kind of see it come together a lot faster. Mm -hmm. But when you're painting everything from the like beginning, it's it kind of looks really bad at first. <laughs> the alien stage, just it, like with sculpting. Yeah, it's really similar. And it's probably just the nature of like this process, but I have seen people make things look good throughout the entire process mm -hmm. you know? it comes with experience with time but yeah the alien phase is very natural absolutely i think it's and it, like you've always said it's so important to be comfortable with that phase because it's just going to be there a lot of the time and if you're not comfortable with it you're not going to persevere through it to the awesome phase mm -hmm. it makes Ooh, and i found a really cool cloud painting uh like video that I want to share with you. Okay. Yeah, so you yeah. can try painting some clouds I as well. I would love that. Because we've talked in the past uh, about trying our hand once again at painting clouds. It would be fun to do that and compare that to our long ago video of oh my gosh. painting clouds. Well, I I don't I don't even remember how long it's been. It's been a really long time. Like, like two years or it something. It might have been two like years. Like way back when we first started Drawbly. So we better bring our A game because if we're not better at clouds now than we were, then um They're so amorphous and like Yeah. It's like a volumetric kind of thing. It's very difficult. And to, yet they can be painted understand. so beautifully. Like we know it's out there, the possibility yeah. of painting beautiful clouds. Yeah. From watching this video, I feel like the main thing I took away was that less is going to be more. Sure, yeah. But I I don't disagree with you. I think clouds are difficult. And you, so like I said, I think next I'm gonna do some gesture drawing. But looking at this hand, I'm like, man. I really do need to like get in and do some more hands, <laughs> yeah. but all things in good time. Oh yeah, drawing's not going anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it's been around for a long does? time. Oh my god. <laughs> I know AI art. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, drawing will still be here. But... Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's part of being human to create and be creative. So mm. you can't take my humanity, AI. That's mine. You may be better at creating images, but I. I can use these brushes. <laughs> but I can use these brushes. Yeah. Yes, this, this is true. AI can't use our brushes. Not yet. Not yet. It mm. can just, you know, simulate them. Yeah, you, you probably could prompt it to like say, use uh, this kind of particular brush and it would probably, mm -hmm. probably be able to do that, you know. But who cares what AI can do? I certainly am not that interested in it from an artistic perspective. No. Not from like just the joy of creating art perspective. Yeah, Like it yeah. doesn't diminish the joy of creation for me. Oh, 100%. I know a lot of people that get really down when it comes to that kind of stuff because a lot of people are doing this specifically for professional re reasons. And I can understand like, you know, how you might have that perspective, but there's still gonna be jobs, there's still gonna be like that kind of work around, like maybe not exactly the same as it is today. Mm -hmm. Like in 10 years, it might be completely different, but you know, people will always need, be needed. Some things, I mean, so many things will be different in 10 years. Change is life, life is change. Just change is inevitable, mm -hmm. you know? We, you gotta be able to work with it to some extent. And change is often so good too. I mean, look at the changes in, in medicine, healthcare, and the advances we've made there. You know, that change can be a good thing. I think change normally is a good thing, but a lot of the time initially it's very, very scary. And, Disruptive. Yeah. So, well, mm. you know, new things are scary, but 
we'll just have to see where it leads us. I like it. I in like the future. it. But uh, here, here he is, pretty much finished up. Yeah. Wow. Adding that like backlight to him to give a little bit of yeah. glow around his head. He's incredible. I mean, all with one brush, one layer. Yeah. No blending. That's amazing. Yeah. That just a so couple amazing. of like color adjustments towards the end and some stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean, that's like you've done the bulk of the work the other way. Like, yeah. It was. It was a tough one. And then uh, this is just like a quick time lapse of this uh, little oh, yeah. scene that I did. Oh, I love it. Um, we should go there. I can't remember the name of this brush off the top of my head. Do you remember? Uh, Prestidigitation. Ah, yes, 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 yes. yes. I it's know like, it well. Yeah. I love this brush. Yeah, it's a, it's a really fun one. So yeah, yeah I use this to uh, create this rocky landscape. This is so cool. You have, like, I would almost get dizzy looking at this and trying to translate it back and forth, like this piece to this piece, but you are just quickly like laying out the the massive pieces and the values and colors like it's nothing this is awesome yeah i mean it's pretty easy if you take the time to like break up the shapes into like light and dark and then start to break it down even further but i spent maybe about an hour and a half on this and it Overall, you know, I like it. I, I enjoy love it. that. Yeah. Like that for an hour and a half is excellent work, Ben. And if you want to do some excellent work, click that like and subscribe button. And check out our guidebook, How to Easily Draw Every Day, at the link below in the description. And this is the part where we say... Goodbye. Goomba. Ben, I would visit this place. I would visit any park. Yeah, would you visit it with that man I painted? Uh, oh, yeah. no. Caught. Never. Caught you red-handed. Oh, no. You, the man you painted and I are. You, you've been staring at my art a little too long. <laughs> no.